What is the meaning of life? This age-old question, pondered by philosophers and seekers throughout the ages, can be encapsulated in a single word, ceremony. The word resonates deeply, touching the very core of our human experience, embodying the profound universality of celebrating joy, commemorating achievements, and mourning losses together with loved ones. Through the mosaic of life's fleeting moments, it is these ceremonial milestones that flash through our eyes on the brink of mortality. Through the annals of time, some venues have been consecrated as hollow grounds where these rituals take on a heightened meaning. In China, no site embodies the significance of ceremony more than the Temple of Heaven. Far surpassing your ordinary Sunday sermon, the Temple of Heaven signified the success or failure of one of the longest lasting empires in history. Built starting in 1406, located in the heart of Beijing, Chinese emperors accompanied by their highest officials would visit the Temple of Heaven twice a year to conduct only the most meticulous and elaborate of ceremonies. Anyone else, the general public, was strictly barred from entry. As the sons of heaven, Chinese emperors possessed the divine right to rule. However, if he fell out of favor with the gods, the mandate of heaven would be revoked, his people would suffer, and his dynasty would fall. Therefore, each ceremony, each offering, and every gesture were crucial to maintaining a harmonious relationship with the gods and ensuring the well-being and prosperity of the entire nation. Hi, I'm Noah. Join me as we explore the hidden gems of China and complete thrilling travel challenges along the way. And today, we're exploring the Temple of Heaven, inspired by the deep spiritual, historical, and ceremonial aura of this place, I find myself reflecting on my past and embracing the future with open arms. Today, I am here to celebrate love in its many forms. Historically, the Temple of Heaven represents the Chinese Emperor's devotional love to his people as well as to the divine. For me, it also represents romantic love, the pursuit of that special someone to share life's journey with. Fate has also brought you to this video for a reason. Let now the remainder of our time together be a celebration of the potential for greater wholeness and love in your own life. As we embrace this spirit of growth and connection, I will be honoring the rich traditions of the Temple of Heaven, as well as the revered Chinese custom of filial piety which emphasizes respect and devotion to one's parents and ancestors. In this unique tribute, I will be connecting virtually with a member of my family at each of the Temple of Heaven's top four attractions and inheriting their timeless lessons of love and life. This is an homage to the age-old values of honoring and learning from our predecessors, ensuring that their cherished insights of the past continue to live on as I personally internalize them, preparing to embark upon one of life's greatest quests, the search for a lifelong partner. And make sure to stay tuned until the end for a special surprise, one that spans across the boundaries of time, place, and culture. As we proceed into these temple grounds, we arrive at one of the centralmost icons of the city of Beijing, and arguably the Temple of Heaven's most vital link between the earthly and celestial realms. This is the Hall of Prayer for Good Harvest. It's impossible to fathom the pure history and the iconic feeling of this place. In total, the Temple of Heaven covers 675 acres. That's about four times the size of the Forbidden City. It is just massive and filled with little tidbits, traces of history everywhere you look. Just take, for example, the 70-year-old door right here. It was installed by the Qianlong Emperor in his weak and frail old age to shorten his walk to and from the halls. He decreed only an emperor could use this if he was above 70 years of age. The footsteps, the traces of the past that encompass every square meter of this place, it gives me such a feeling of, of curiosity, of wonder, for the unknown, and I think that, most of all, is what makes this place magnificent. This place sets the stage for a deeply personal narrative. I'm here today to interview my father, the emperor of my clan, 
Good morning, Dad. Thank you. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. My first question for you is, in the past, emperors came here to perform rites as they believed it would bring benefit for their entire kingdom. As a leader of in our family, what are some rituals or practices you believe are important for maintaining harmony in the home? Um, you know me. I've always been uh, about family, making sure that there is time for family. And you know, I believe in a balance, you know, Harmony doesn't come without some discord, right? Um, and so like with any family, there are always ups and downs. Um, and uh, I believe that every attempt should be made to express those to both ends of the spectrum. That would be what I would hope you guys take from it, how you keep harmony in the family, that you bring nothing that's not negotiable on both sides because at the end of the day your family the next question is what legacy do you hope to leave behind and how do you hope to do so that's a tough one i've never really thought about a legacy or what mm -hmm. to leave behind but i think uh, i hope i've taught you guys that you with passion and hard work you can do anything in life and 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 be content i feel like that probably has been the most uh important lesson for me that I have learned uh, from when you busted my butt in middle school. It wasn't fun at the time, but yeah, I, I'm deeply grateful because of that today. I, I do believe that I'm capable of accomplishing whatever I set my mind to. And that is, that's huge. That's, you can't put a price on that. So thank you so much. You leave me speechless, uh, I, also, yeah, bro. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you leave me speechless. I don't know what to say. One of the other main reasons I'm calling you is I, I want to share with you a new chapter, a new adventure I'm beginning to embark on. So I'm seeking to learn age-old dance traditions. You know that I, I'm very passionate about dance. You know, for me, there's nothing that makes me feel more alive and can, can you know, change my mood instantaneously. I've started um, studying this dance from Northeast China. It's called Yanga because this dance originates from Northeast China. We're gonna travel around five different cities in Northeast China. Yeah, my intention is just when I get to each of those places to kind of revive these old traditions to spread joy and ultimately to dance for people who I feel have resonate with my heart, uh, with the intention of finding that special person to share my life with. To me, this is this is a journey I plucked from the, the soul of the world. I would like to just ask for your blessing as I embark upon this quest. You always have my blessing, dude. Sometimes you get a little bit philosophical or deep and I get lost because I'm a little bit more simple-minded. But I and agree, okay. I think dance has been something you've loved and something that brings a lot of emotion and joy and happiness. And when you dance, everybody gets happy. I'm sure you'll hopefully accomplish what you hope to accomplish. Now, having internalized my father's heartfelt teachings, we delve deeper into the temple of heaven. Now, finding ourselves at a marvel of acoustic engineering, the Echo Wall. The Echo Wall was originally designed to amplify prayers to the heavens. When one whispers gently along its curved surface, their words are transported across to the other side as if carried by the echoes of history. Just footsteps away and encased by the echo wall stands the imperial vault of heaven. This solemn edifice safeguards the divine tablets of the emperor's ancestors, a crucial part of the temple ceremonies. It's here at this repository of time that I call upon the wisdom of my mother's mother, herself a living, breathing vault of stories from ages past. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, yes. And see you both. Okay. And I need Great. my ice cream. Okay. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Enjoy your ice cream. So my, my question, first question for you, Grandma. So just as the echo walk carries whispers from one side to another, have there been messages or pieces of advice about love that you've carried through your life? And what are they, if any? That is very profound. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me say, well, I mean, if you love somebody, then it's a strong feeling of affection for them, and you accept them as they are, sort of. <laughs> Unless, 
Unless they don't unload the dishwasher. I think if you have a relationship, you work out what works best for you, and you both have to have a commitment to it. The echo wall. It was actually designed to amplify prayers to the heavens, as the echo wall carries sound in such a clear and precise way. What clear and precise advice would you give me about、uh, finding success in life and nurturing lasting love? Well, find what you want to do and work at it. And if you find somebody that you're interested in that you would like to develop a strong relation with, relationship with, and grow to love, then make that commitment and stick with it. But it takes a commitment on two people. One more thing for you, for you, Grandma.、Um, part of the reason why I'm calling as well is、uh, I'm getting ready to embark on a new chapter in my life. I'm seeking to learn traditional dances of the world, and I want to、uh, embody that, learn that, study that, and then take those lessons that I've learned and take my passion for dance to serenade souls on the streets who I feel. From my heart, a connection with, with the goals of number one, spreading joy and love, and number two,、uh, ultimately hoping to find someone to share life's journey with. And I would like to ask for your blessing as I embark on this journey. You have my blessing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I wish you an Irish Jay. Oh and yeah. The, and the Slovaks do a polka. Good luck. Much love.、Okay. From the imperial vault of heaven, it's on to the fasting palace, aka the palace of abstinence, an essential embodiment of ceremonial purity and thoughtful preparation. Within its tranquil halls and secluded chambers, designed to encourage deep reflection and meditation, emperors of old would commence a spiritual cleanse. Through fasting and abstinence, they entered a profound state of spiritual renewal, preparing them to conduct the sacred rites and pray for a bountiful harvest. I am here now to consult two extraordinary individuals, having grown up in India. And spent the last 60 years living in the United States. These two embody both the wisdom of the East and insights from the West. They are my father's parents, or as I call them, Amuma and Mutishin. Good evening, Amuma.、Uh, yeah, it's, it's great to see you. Great to connect with you. So my my first question for you is: In this place where emperors once prepared themselves spiritually before important ceremonies, how have you prepared yourself mentally or spiritually for significant events in your life? Majority of、uh, occasions begin with a worship of de- a deity, which is usually Ganesh. You know, our culture emphasizes a lot on. Physical cleanliness as well as mental cleanliness. So you have to have a bath and wear fresh clothes, and then you light the sacred lamp, the wick, and the oil are supposed to represent body and the soul, and the light is the life. And、um, you have、uh, fruits and offerings to the deity、uh, to invoke its presence. Thank you for sharing. As you're saying that, what comes up for me is just. Well, well, I think the religion and the, the beliefs here in China are somewhat different, not too different.、Mm-hmm. But I feel like the language of ceremony spoken here at the Temple of Heaven is the same language, you know, you're speaking of, especially here at the Palace of Abstinence. You know, the the whole idea of spiritual renewal. I mean, these are really things that have been. Uh, adapted worldwide to different religions and cultures, so yeah, I think it's very interesting. My next question for you is: Yeah, what are some of the most important life lessons or values you hope to pass down to future generations? The most important. I was、uh, raised in a home where we were literally brainwashed about the impermanence of life and and how illusory the world is. So the word for that is Maya. So the expectation is for you to. Awaken yourself to go through life as a journey in which you develop self-awareness and consciousness. It's a long journey. Begin with when you are infant. We have structures like morning、uh, spiritual time, evening spiritual time. So I'm hoping that、uh, the next generation will hang on to that because、um, uh, it, it 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 really has has the answer for finding peace and joy.、Uh, 
because and it's, it's it's so real. It's so real. It's not imaginary to be in touch with the source of your everything. I hope that the next generation will become more conscious, uh, the, uh, uh, conscious choices they can make, so that there will be no war and no competition for limited resources. There will be compassion and um, and and treat the whole world as one family. And then I, I also want to ask you, what what rituals or keys uh, do you think have been important to your relationship with Mujishina? It's been 61 years. That is quite an accomplishment. <laughs> as long as he's there for me and to enhance my spiritual well-being. I think ultimately relationships are all about enhancing each other's spiritual well-being. I think key to accommodation is being interested in the well-being of the other person as much as you care about your well-being. Yeah. And sense. finding a way to meet halfway, if not, at least halfway, yeah. if not more. I mean, I happen to believe that problems in life are assignments from upper self. And so I try to work it. I always ask, what lessons do I have in this? And even house cleaning, that used to be so boring for me i find that as an assignment and as soon as i look at it that way i'm in and relationships are too i mean of all the people why this person in your life you also asked a question about legacy you said legacy i never even thought about legacy and i came to to finally accept the fact that my legacy are my children and you guys you know beautiful individuals who lives ethically within law-abiding, ethical, beautiful people, responsible people. What more can legacy can I expect, you know? Another main reason why I'm calling you is uh, I'd like to share a new chapter that I'm embarking on. You know, the main reason that I've come here to the Temple of Heaven is I'm having this ceremony to set the intention to meet my life companion. I've spent a lot of time, you know, thinking about, because I, I do believe I'm the creator of my life, how do I want to create this meeting between two souls? And ultimately, inspired by the world of Bollywood growing up and uh, loving dance, I've decided that I'm going to study ancient traditions of dance, to study it, honor it, and also capture all of this in, in, through film and video, and, um, and then to make it my own, to take it to the streets and to with the intentions of serenading those who resonate with my heart with the intentions of spreading love and joy but also also meeting that special someone i would like to ask for your blessing as i embark on this journey absolutely i give you i'm touching your head and give it, giving you my blessing i have all the faith that a person will be delivered to you or your wish will be granted because my personal experience is when you do your work the universe will deliver to you it has always happened but you have to do your yeah. part and you cannot expect things to happen without doing your part and then the rest you you let go you surrender you just um, uh, trust the universe to deliver to you if it is meant to happen and it will it will for you so all yeah. the best to you and stay blessed and we will keep i'll keep you in my prayers so that send you a lot of positive energy yeah, yeah. wow I, it's uh that's really deep amuma uh thank you i really appreciate it life is the dance and you are the dancer is that did i say it right so oh, I'm I, I, just think, perfect, I just think that if it's the, the you everything that i have ever wanted including meeting a mate has been delivered. This has been a really lovely conversation. So thank yeah, you so that I will hold in my heart forever, yeah. Let us now move on to the Circular Mound Altar, a true masterpiece of ancient Chinese cosmology. The altar features three concentric terraces, each representing a distinct layer of the universe, from the underworld to the earth to the heavens, illustrating the ancient Chinese philosophy of harmony between humanity and the universe. On the day of the winter solstice, when the shadow of the sun is the longest, the emperor would ascend this altar to pray, seeking to harness the favor of the heavens and invoke blessings upon his people. It is at this site filled with deep symbolic significance that I will interview 
my mother, someone I consider a master at deciphering the symbols present in this world and beyond. Hello, mom. Lovely to see you as always. My first question for you is: For many hundreds of years, they conducted ceremonies here at the Temple of Heaven, but the circular mound altar was a huge site for conducting those ceremonies. And as you know, I'm, I've arrived here to conduct a ceremony. W- what do you think is the power of ceremony in this world and life? Well, actually, I received a dream message once, and、uh, I swear it said that there were three ways to alter your state of being. And I, can I remember all three? I know one was through dance. I think the second was meditation, and the third was through ceremony. So I think by ceremony, you're setting the intention. And as we know, we are the creators of our own universe. We're the masters of our own life. And so I think by ceremony, you're really setting a powerful intention、um, into the universe, and you know, creating your own life. My next question for you is: Yeah, so. I mean, all of these sites here at the Temple of Heaven are filled with such intricate detail all around, down to the, the tiniest piece of paint. Because I know you've traveled all around the world to different sacred sites. W- what is the power? What is the significance of those detailed, like carvings and pictures,、um, on 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 a site like this? And to to enter that space. Well, I think the first power is, is someone who walks into a space like that is just awe. You know, it's layer upon layer upon layer. You know, the cornices have been painted and are raised with you know decorated figures, as is the ceiling, as is the floor, and it's just when you walk into that, it's literally awe-inspiring. And I think that's what the Artists and the designers were trying to create is to replicate like the awe that you would have when you go to heaven. You know, you walk in there and it's like literally like. A,、um, but if we go to the importance of this day for you and your setting the attention and doing the ceremony, you know, each artist. Or artisan, with each element, if there's an intention, if there's a design, it just augments the power of that space. I always think that people always ask me, like, what's your favorite place to travel to? And it's like, how can I choose? Because it's such a privilege to see all of these places, especially a place like the Temple of Heaven, which. Has such historic significance for such a long period of time. My last question for you is: At the top of the circular mound altar, in the center, is this kind of elevated stone where the emperor would stand on to send prayers forth to the heavens, asking for the well-being of the nation. What is the power and the energy of the center, the center of something?、Uh, I don't really know. I mean, I think. We are always the center of our own universe, so I don't think you need to stand on an altar to channel that energy. You are you already have it. And again, I reference my favorite movie of all time, The Wizard of Oz, because in that movie, Dorothy wants to go home. That's her quest, and she finds out at the end of the movie that she had the power all along. You know, and although you're doing this ceremony today, which I think is so beautiful, and I love the intention that you're setting. I mean, there's also not really the necessity to do that. Like we already have everything that we need. You already are love. You already are surrounded by love. You know,、um, you're surrounded by beauty. Being in China with all of these incredible historical buildings and artifacts that surround you. So. I don't know that you necessarily need to be in the center. I think you already are. Mm-hmm. But you're more. Yeah,、nice. I think I think that. Yeah, that's very profound, and I hope people besides me gain some insight from that as well. But I think what you're doing, Noah, is so beautiful, and I think that you are like the artisans of the Temple of Heaven, where you're taking every little facet. You know, creating this beautiful ceremony, empowering yourself, empowering your future beloved. I think you're like the artisans, where you know every thought, every detail, and you can see that in the videos that you create. Like they're so rich with their details, 
and as I told you before, like, I'm really excited to see, I know that this ceremony is going to invoke a very special someone drawing them to you. And I, for one, cannot wait to meet her. Okay, thank you very much. So yeah, mom, I just want to say, yeah, I love you. Really appreciate you. And yeah, I mean, honestly, you're my best friend out of all the people oh. in the world. Uh, I share, yeah. I share the most with you. You're the you're the person who I, you know, feel closest to and feel like I can talk to about anything. Yeah, I just I really appreciate that, and I appreciate how you're you're so full of unconditional love. Uh, of course, for me as your son, you know, I, I I see that you're so full of unconditional love for everyone you interact with in the world, and that's such a beautiful thing and such a. Um, you're a teacher for me in that way. Oh, thank you, Noah. That's the best gift my mom could ever receive. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Today, under the vast skies of the Temple of Heaven, we've shared stories, smiles, and tears, weaving together the threads of love and life that bind us all. Now, as we reach the culmination of our gathering, I invite each of you to join me for a transformative walking meditation prayer. Dear God, as we walk the sacred path once trodden by emperors, each step through the temple of heaven becomes a meditation on love and the beauty of life. Here, at the crossroads of destiny, where the ancient and eternal meet, we are reminded of the power within us all to shape our futures. Like the hall of prayer for good harvest, our heart beats as vaulted domes, pulsing with the harmonies of joy and suffused with the light of gratitude. We are whole. In this moment of connection with the divine and the earth, I pray for a companion with whom to share life's voyage. May her path effortlessly intersect with mine as impeccably timed as the dance of the stars above. By continuing to walk with love in our hearts and an open spirit to life's surprises, providence is bound to come upon us, deepening the sense of love and wonder in our hearts. I now extend a heartfelt call to each of you. Dare to dream. Let us channel and share the energy of our aspirations as effortlessly as the echo wall transmits whispers from soul to soul. From the heart of China, beneath the watchful gaze of ancient temples and boundless sky, I send forth this prayer, hoping it moves you to embrace your destiny, to build your dreams, and to embrace the abundance of your own spirit. I'll see y'all for our next great China adventure.